everybody. <laughs> Rogers got me laughing. But uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Meeting Gold podcast. I want to thank you so much for joining us. I'm really pumped for this episode today because it's been a little while since I've seen Roger, but I think our brains really connected on, on some on some really cool things. We've talked off camera a lot just about work, burnout, family life, um, and then also business as well. well. We'll get into that. But I think you, Roger, you present a really good role model for what it means to like basically work your ass off for extensive periods of time, something that not everybody should do. And then I think you realize that and, and you really took it to another level of connecting with people and connecting with your family. And that's why I wanted to bring you on because I think a lot of people, they they forget that, okay, work is one thing, but actually having relationships with people that you care about is another thing, especially as a father. Extremely, yeah, man. I love it. Well, listen, Roger, thank you for coming on the podcast today. Let's give a little introduction um, about what you do, who you are, where you came from. Just a simple backstory, one to two minutes. Well, who I am? Yeah. Oh, who I am? That's a loaded who am question. I? Who am I? Who am yeah. I? Who am I? <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm just we, hey, we were laughing about your uh, <laughs> laughing about your fit before because we brought up the Joker. Why so serious? Yeah, and I think so it shows serious? your personality really well. Yeah, why? I, I don't like I said to you before. I don't know nothing about style <laughs> except my own. <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> Whatever that is. Right. right. So, Roger, yeah. what what company do you run right now, and what do you do? Like, what pays the bills? What What's your right living? now? I run a company called Property Rehab, and we do uh, home renovations, home additions, uh, custom builds. And uh, it's in a residential, some like commercial uh, yeah. industry, yeah. Uh, I think you downplayed it a little bit because you do some really cool Well, I don't projects. save lives. Uh, but you did one. <laughs> what was the one that you just did? You completely, you're taking a, a, a home right now, just a single family home, right? And converting it into some two-story modern. That, I'll be starting that soon in the spring. Yeah, I'll yeah. be taking some kind of, um, kind of like a one-story, 800 square foot warrant time home. Yeah. And we're dropping the basement two feet because it's a shallow basement. And we're adding a second story. And we're doing a uh, like a very ultra modern look. I love it. Nice. And if you saw this house, guys, like anybody listening, if you saw this house, I don't think you would actually be able to comprehend what's going to happen to it. There's a lot of work going into that. So listen, that leads me to my first question for yeah. you, Roger. Your creative brain, I mean, it's one thing to you know be able to create videos and, and edit videos, but it's another thing to convert somebody's living quarters into something that they absolutely love. I mean, you've told me sometimes where people really don't have an idea of what they want to do. They just want change. And then you give their your idea, your creative idea. Where did that creative mindset come from for you? Was it your parents? Was it just who you surrounded yourself with? Like, where did that come from for you? I really don't know. It's definitely not for my parents. Right. Like, I guess they're creative to a certain point, but I think it has to do with um, upbringing, maybe. Yeah. I spent a lot of, of my childhood uh, alone. Type of thing. I was very introvert, very quiet, and you get to uh, get a creative imagination. You right? think a lot. Yeah. 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 yeah I think too much. But uh, yeah, we get uh, a creative imagine, imagination. We get imaginary scenarios, and, and it's almost like, uh, I don't know, it's dreamland, but yeah. you sort of see things beyond what they are. Interesting. You know? Interesting. I, I kind of get what you mean. You know, just because if I see a wall, but when you're a kid, and that could be a wall, that could be a mountain, that could be whatever, that could be... A, and you know what you know? I admire is that you 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 have that kid brain of creativity. And I think that's something that a lot of people lose, which is kind of sad. As you, as you get older and as you work more, you lose this creative element. But like... You will lose it, but it comes back when you have kids. Interesting. So you would you I mean? say that being a father, that's a big inspiration for you for what you do? Um, well, being a father makes me more relaxed what I do. Right. Um, my kids have zero drive to me to make money, right. to be successful. I could be very dangerous on my own without them. But what they do is they give me the drive to be a, a better person, a patient person, more understanding, more relaxed, right? you know, more loving. What they do, they do help a lot. Mm -hmm. You know. And so you were kind of telling me a little bit about your story. We don't have to get too much in detail no. about it, but you, when the, when the first time we met, you told me that you worked like basically two or three years just straight, just well, complete grind mode. That, that comes from my dad. Yeah. Yeah. He was, um, everyday work. Right. 365, 24, seven. It was work, 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 work. It was all work. And, and, and I just, that's all I knew. You know, I knew that for the longest time, I thought 80 hours a week was a normal work week. And if I would work less than that, I felt lazy. Useless. Yeah, but also becomes very dangerous because, I don't know, it all depends on your person. I have an addictive personality. And I got addicted to, the, to, to being driven, to the drive, to the rush. 
Yeah, so from my 20s and 30s, I did probably 3,000 straight days. You know? Yeah. Uh, Christmas, weddings. Nope. Yeah, I didn't go to nothing, nothing. It was just work, 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 work. And it came to a point when I was in my early 30s. I, had a, I was in the Quarthas. I had a beautiful ranch bungalow on the water. I had a bikes, boats, vehicles, and everything. I didn't touch them. My boat sank. You know, instead of me taking yeah. care of it, it just sunk. Like <laughs> I, I was just like, and, and one day I just woke up at probably 33, 34. And I said, I'm done. And were and you I, single? You didn't have a family at this point? Uh, I was married. Okay. No kids. No kids. At the time. And so what, did that spark you to have a family? Uh, yes and no. Yeah. I wasn't at the time, I wasn't really on my mind, you know, it was more about uh, dealing with my issues. Right. You know, sometimes people work because they're driven. Sometimes people work because they're passionate. I worked a lot. Uh, one of my reasons because you're, I was hiding. And you know what? Let's talk a little bit about that because if we can be open about that, I think a lot, we'll save a lot of people listening from doing the same mistakes. Yeah. On a, on a very minor level, I kind of did the same thing. You, you find an escape in work and you know people say oh well that's a good thing like at least you're being productive at least you're not sitting there watching a movie or something every single day watching netflix all the time no 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 it's not it can be the most destructive thing for your brain on the planet so okay you had a not a well kind of a turning point you had that like that turning point uh, something must have click yeah something hit because i actually walked away were you burnt out i was fed up mm. I went from doing 3,000 straight days every day, live, dream, obsess over work, to didn't do one thing for two years. Right. Nothing. And was that, what, what did you do in those two? Just relax? Like, just not stress? Not, like, what was that for you? Because coming from, you know, grinding literally for like 10 years straight to not doing anything, that's a drastic change. I didn't do nothing. Right. Like, the, the true story is not a pretty story. You know, I went from that life to a motel room with nothing. I walked away from everything. My vehicles, money, everything. Like I had zero for two years. I was in a motel room uh, up in uh, Kitchener. And, uh, and I, I obviously you need to eat. So being the hustle myself, I hustled my way to a maintenance job at a hotel and managing the other. <laughs> but it wasn't Are my... Are you kidding it, me? It, no. I was still doing 90 hours a week. Because they were, they were, you know, they took advantage and whatever. Yeah. But to me, it wasn't stressful. It's not my business. It's not nothing. So I'm at, in my mid thirties, uh, net value of zero, making $310 a week. Wow. And people may say, oh, that's so sorry. That's so sad, Roger. I was freaking happy. You know, I knew it doesn't take much for me to get back whatever I want. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I'm screwed for life. No. A little bit here, a little bit there, bulk, I'm yep. back whatever I want. But I, that's what I did. I, I didn't even think about nothing except managing that motel doing the maintenance, chill out of my room. I didn't talk to nobody. And you were, you were genuinely happy with where you were at doing that? Well, happy with the situation. Sat satisfied? Satisfied with the situation, not happy what brought me there. Okay. You know? Interesting. Because it's almost like that, that breaking point is what cracked you and just brought you into that low state. Well, that too, but also when you have multiple... I, I used to run multiple businesses at once, you know? Right. And so when you go from that to nothing... Um, it kind of opens your eyes where nobody wants nothing from you at that moment. When I get, and I was in a strange environment surrounded with strangers. So when somebody invited me for, hey, let's come over for dinner, there is nothing in the world he wants from me besides my company. Hmm. You know? Interesting. When you're doing this, you got this, you own this business, you're doing this, you're involved in finance, you're following that. When somebody talks to you, after a while, I was like, who am I? Does right. he want to have a coffee with me or does he want something? Interesting. And it, it's like, oh my God, who would, you know. Now, now that might have come from something like an upbringing because I think that's a, that's a mindset that not a lot of people develop. They're almost, like I would actually say that people that don't think that are naive because I think there's strategies behind everything that everybody does. If somebody wants to ask you for a coffee or bring you out to lunch and you're, you know, and you're, you're both in your thirties, you both run two companies, you got to think sometimes it might be that, but don't, so don't be naive to it. No, but when you do some, when you're just doing work, 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 you forget that you're actually a human. Interesting. So that you forget that, that personal side. And it's always like, and I guess, I guess at that point I was just like, you know what? I'm just done. You know, I went for so long. I don't want, for so long I went, I don't want to talk about the weather. The weather yeah. don't, the weather don't benefit me to please talk to me about the weather. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know oh, that's I mean? interesting. You know, like. 
it, it's almost like that stress. Would you say that you are um, blessed or you are happy that you learn those lessons earlier in your life rather than living your whole life like that? Yes, I am because I have an example that's older than me uh, that I could see myself if I didn't, which is my father. Interesting. Because I look at him, he's still the same way at 68. He hasn't changed. And uh, he knows he'll admit it. And he missed out. So what? Right. So what do you do this? So what do you got that? So what do you met him? He did this. He had, uh, he had, um, he had dinner with uh, the prime minister of uh, Nicaragua once. To talk about infrastructure. Like, at the end of the day, it's like, he's like, I did not live a healthy life. You know? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things he misses. Sure, there's, there's pros and cons. Like, we never go, like, cottage or fishing or this or that. And, you know, did the father and son thing. He did teach me how to survive, though. Right. You know, but, yeah, I am glad now. Um, because if I didn't learn it, it would have been a problem when I started a family for sure. Yeah. And I think that was the, I, what I, what I really see in this is that you learned what you didn't want to become. You saw you, like you said, you had that example and then you knew, okay, I think I am ready to start a family because of what I've learned. Would you have started, like, did you ever imagine yourself having a family when you were in your 20, when you were like, let's say 25 or 26? Well, that's a tricky situation because I had a child when I was 18. Interesting. So I have a daughter that's going to be 28 next week. Right. You know, and the reason why I did not have kids, right now my other one, from 28 to 9, like my mm-hmm. next one is 9 years old, so it's like a 20, yeah. 21 year difference. There's a reason, it was also a reason why I waited so long, because it was a, it was not a pleasant experience. Right. The first time, we, we were strange, we fought, then we, we fought to be together. So yeah. to me, I was like, it was not a positive, it was a painful. Mm-hmm. So I didn't want to have kids, no. Yeah. I didn't want to have any more. For a long time. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But when I did, and I, I made myself a plan when I have kids, I'll do this, I'll do this, and I'll do this, then I'll do that. So, um, to any, like, older guys listening, fathers, um, you know, grandfathers, what are, I think they're picking out some lessons from, from you that you learned at an earlier age to be or to live a happier life. So what would be some advice that you would give to that father that's maybe struggling to not focus on, or to foc- focusing on so much on work and struggling to not enjoy some time with family? Well, in my situation, uh, I'll give you an example. Yeah. People still ask me, I'm, you work a lot? I do. I still do. Yeah. I try to take every second Sunday off a month, you know, uh, but it's not like it used to be. It's not like six, seven companies, this and that. It's I, I, I delegate, I manage, so it's easier. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I was telling this person, maybe, I, actually it was just last week, and he's asking me about that. And I go, yeah, sometimes I do sevens, you know, six, sevens. And his response was, yeah, well, I take the weekends off because it's important to me to be a good father. And I took that kind of offensive a little bit. Like, I don't take weekends off because I mean, I'm a right, bad father. Right. So my response was to him, you could take your two days off to be a father for two days. I'll continue working seven days a week and I'll continue being a father seven days a week. Interesting. It's not about, um, like it's not, choosing. It's, it's, not, yeah. it's, it's not about quantity of time, which it is. It's about the quality of time, right? Sure. I work seven days a week and uh, a lot of the times I wake them up, I dress them, you know, I bring them to school, I pick them up, I, I make them supper you know, I still teach them uh, their lessons uh, in life, you know. I, I, teach, yeah, I yeah. teach them to be very, very strong. I, I'm extremely loving. You know, all the loving, the hugging, the kissing, the playing, the moments. Yeah. You know, you can still do that. So it's almost like what you're saying is you don't have to, because I think a lot of people think they have to choose. No, you don't have to choose. But the major change for me from then, from now, is now I could delegate. Right. In business. Let's before, talk about that. Before, I had to touch everything. Interesting. Everything from very the, controlling. Not like yes, I guess yeah. Yeah, controlling, controlling because I want to make sure it's done right. Yeah, and um, nobody could be like me, so nobody can do me. You know that was me before. Mm-hmm. Then I realized in business, if somebody could do you seventy five percent of you, eighty seventy five, that's good because you never find a hundred like you, right? Interesting. So it took me a while. Now I delegate. I oversee the delegation, but I still delegate. You huh. know? Yeah. So, so let's, let's not, talk about that. Yeah, so yeah, now yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm cause I delegate with this small company I got and I made a promise when I started this family and I'm going I'm to start a small company. I will not hustle hard until my youngest is five or six and I'm just going to be chill. So right now to me, the last 10 years is 10 years this year that I opened up this company. 
this is chill for me. You know, it looked like we do a lot of cool stuff, but it's still chill in my experience. Yeah. It's very yeah, chill. Yeah, yeah. Delegate. My little boy is going to be turning five next year. He's getting close to six. That was my plan. Then I'm going to start. Now they're getting older. You know, they can understand a little bit more of what you're no, doing. It's not as a, it's very precious or two, three, four. To be yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they're going to get older. I'm going to be, I'm going to start diversifying myself again very shortly. Interesting. But for now it's delegation. And since I did it with this small company and it's working, I can't wait to do it with, with other stuff now. Yeah. I can't wait to do what I have planned in my head and do it this time with delegation. So let's talk about that because I mean, I can be open about it. I struggle with that yeah. is delegating tasks, you know, whether it's a media company, a finance company, construction company, whatever it is. Delegating is how you build a company. Oh. Like that is, that is extreme. And, and for somebody like, cause normally people, you know, building a company, they're the leaders. They've always been the top dog. They've always been the, I do it my way and that's why I'll grow. Well, hold on a second. You only get, you get to a certain point where you can't do you anymore. You have to be able to incorporate people. So what are some, I guess, how did you learn how to delegate? Why did you feel like you had to, to start with? Well, it's one of those business things. You hear it all the time. Delegate, delegate, delegate. Delegate, yeah, delegate, yeah. delegate, until I look more into it. And I thought, like I said before, I thought you have to find somebody who's like you. If somebody is like me, he ain't working for me. So you ain't going to find me. <laughs> I'm going to quote you on that. That was amazing. You know what I mean? You're right. You're right. It's not going to happen. So I find something that's, that's got the passion, the driven, the understanding, the work ethics, and um, yeah, the love and respect for what you're doing. Yeah. And if, yeah. It's, if, it's, if it's 75%, of your capability. So be it. Beautiful. Yeah. I couldn't ask for more. And it was hard at first. I was like, bah, 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 micromanaging, micromanaging with the stuff. And I started letting it go a bit. I'm still going to oversee it because they're not me. Right. And, and I'm not going to let them trip on their own feet, which is costs me thousands. So I have to work with it and appreciate what I have and relax a bit. Because if I get too on their ass, then I got nobody to delegate to. Ah, that's very interesting. You know, the, I love that. No, the, I love it. You're right. If if somebody's 100% you, they're not going to work for you. Nope. Cuz you you don't, there's a reason you don't work for anybody. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yep. Okay, so so let's talk a little bit about now you you've learned how to delegate um building a team because you have a pretty cool team. I got to be honest. I, when I met your team, you've got some pretty cool guys. Shout out to Lee. I love Lee. He's, he's amazing. He's a beautiful man. That boy. Yeah. He, you know why he represents great work ethic. And I think even just me seeing him for six hours was amazing. Um, so let's talk about deciding on or, or building a team. What are some traits that you look for in people and, and how do you find those? How do you interview, uh, call, uh, like, like what, what does that process look like for you building? Uh, number one rule is that you don't come in my workshop or my office with a golf shirt. Interesting. It's a joke, but <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no, no, seriously. Um, what I look forward to is obviously your character and I'll listen, I'll listen how they talk and, and you could probably, um, well, obviously you learn a lot from somebody by letting them talk. Yeah. That's, you true. know, I'm not very good at, you got to ask these four questions and it's a standard. I don't do that. I've just, I could be talking about, um, I don't know, man, skateboarding. During the interview. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with the construction half sometimes. But I want to see who you are. Are you a sponge? You know what I mean? Are, yep. you, are you my opposite of the magnet where you're just pushing stuff away? Do you soak it up? Um, how, how, when you talk about it, how do you feel? What's your goals? Who you are? The way he talks about his family? Everything. That's important. Skills are at the bottom of my freaking... Yeah. Because you can, you can teach people that. Oh, yeah. I could, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, Definitely. So you don't rely on, you don't rely on, you know, obviously they got to know stuff. I mean, you're not going to hire a, a financial planner to, to do, you know, trades like it, to, it's, but you kind of feel out what they know in terms of family life. Uh, are they passionate about things? Do they have drive? Do they have the strength? That kind of thing. Yeah. How they speak. What's your man? What's your mannerism? You right. know, when they're talking to me, I picture them in my client's house when I'm out there and the client's talking to him. Oh, that's interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I could have a, a, a triple A carpenter in there in my, in, in my client's house. And like if he's I, an asshole. Exactly. Right. My clients, all they see is that. 
Yeah, that's true. Because so so you saying that skills kind of basically are at the bottom of the requirements, meaning the client's not going to see, you know, let's let's say you're building a fireplace, right? The client's not going to see this, the different skill levels that the guy has in a fireplace. He might notice a few things, but it all goes down to, is that person a good person? Like, can you communicate with the other guy? Can you be okay with, you know, uh, talking with him? Can you set it, can you have actually maintain conversation? Well, especially in my business where I want, you want everything to be smooth. Right. If the guy's personable, and my guys on the crew, and they're personal, they're talking, and the client feels comfortable. An issue arise, they're more into a more comfortable environment to discuss the unexpected, unforeseen problem. We move forward. Mm, interesting. And now, if the, the guy's rubbing my client the wrong way, and there's a problem that came up, that has nothing to do with my guy, it just happens to be because it's a construction, they could be automatically in defense mode. Like, ah, right. oh, he's an asshole, you probably did it on purpose. Or some stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's when I'm. I, I guess I am into a um, a building business, but it's 100 percent a people business. You know, it's all about it's a respect business. Mm-hmm. I've did jobs where we did an incredible, like like I said, an amazing feature wall, let's say, or something crazy sick. Yeah. And the client's like, "What do you think?" And you're like, "Well, you could have swept a little bit more." You know, yeah. So, oh, so I, I've been saying that since I was this big. So I've been taught that clean. People's like, it's not. I don't give a shit. You clean. I don't right. care if you don't think it's cl- just clean, clean, clean. Because you have no idea. That's the first thing they see. Mm. You know, they won't even see what you build. They will just see the dirty floor. So right. I gotta get guys that know the respect. You know. So let me ask you this, okay? So you kind of brought that up, and and I'm thinking in my head, like, okay, how do you not? lose it when somebody does that after working that hard to make them happy. And then they, you know, they notice something that small because you are in the business of quality control. Mm-hmm. I mean, I always, and it goes back to, to running a media business too. Like you don't want your quality to sacrifice when you delegate, right? So being a quality manager is a big deal. Now, how do you let yourself not get so worked up in emotions when somebody doesn't appreciate or understand where you're coming from for a said job, or if it's a client. Like, how do you how do you deal with that? You get used to it, right? You know, at first, it, it may like if you're starting a business, let's say your first year into it, it's gonna probably insult you, piss you off, get you, yeah. But to me, I've been doing it for so long now. It's like, it's it's just people, personalities, right? You know, I I can't force you to appreciate um, this ma- amazing craftsmanship. Yeah. You know, I can't force you to ignore a little bit of dust on the ground. You know, you got to understand that they may have woke up receiving bad news in their world and they're laying it off on you. There's so many things that could right. happen. So Why? understanding their perspective. You have to. And, and, and that's hard sometimes. You have to sit back and think. They're actually not even pissed off at you. Their, their grandmother died. We don't know that. Mm-hmm. There's so many things. It takes to be a really rude ignorant person just to be straight out dick yeah that's true there's that always true there's always something that's bugging them Every, everybody's got their own personal lives they got their own personal problems we you happen i like and, what you said there oh, and, yeah and if we're there for six months they see our face every day they get comfortable of expressing their feelings instead of hiding it because now they're like we're there right at first like he's happy go lucky well, yeah, maybe they had demons, but now we've been there so long, we're almost like friends now that they don't feel so bad right, letting stuff right. out, right? Oh, I love that. I love how you brought that up. Okay, so now talking about clients, let's talk, let's let's transfer into business side yeah. of things now. So you you are a very confident business guy. You've your experience in running companies, um, it's it's pretty immense. Not a lot of people have that type of resume you do. So Building that, re- re- I call it resume, but just experience, right? Building those companies, um, building property rehab. I mean, you could really take property rehab to a whole other level if you, like you said, if you just completely put your I heart wanted to. and soul. Yeah. If you wanted to, right? So, but like, where does that confidence come from? Where did you learn? Like, was, did you, I mean, it sounds like your father did teach you a lot about just business in a sense and, and how to survive there. Yeah, the confidence comes from because that's all I know. Right. Yes. Are you a very confident person, Roger? Well, it depends on the topic. If it comes from work, I'll talk to you about anything. Right. The, the work doesn't fear me. Whether it's I could, it's a one point six billion dollar thing we're building. Yeah. What's the difference? Fifty grand, one point six billion, same thing. Yeah. You know, uh, we're going to be going to an auditorium next week. We're going to talk about your feelings and love. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, man, Mike. Like, uh, zero confidence. Yeah, yeah, no, no. You'll do a $1 billion project, but but that that's a little oh, bit yeah. hesitant. It's like going on a first date. You're like, <laughs> I meet this guy. He builds this. He's like, first date. You're like, Hi. yeah, yeah, right? Hi. I love it. So, <laughs> you know? so your experience with business, you are a very confident person. What were some strategies that you used to market your your skills being in the trades business? So anybody in the trades listening, um, I think you're a great person to ask this question to. What were some of the ways you marketed what you knew how to do, your skills? When I first started off? Yeah, when you first started. Imagine, imagine you just got out of school, trade school, okay? Imagine, put yourself in that position. Well, when I first started, it's different than now. Right. Now it's 2022. It's a different world, you know? Uh, when I first started, I didn't have what, what you guys have now. It was it's right now it's so easy to market a business. Right. You know, you get an Instagram page, Facebook page. That could bring a business some, right there, yeah. You know, boom. But before I, I spent a career without it, which I'm glad. I'm happy I was able to do that side of it. Yeah. You know, so this side is easy. But what I did, like when I first started property rehab, um, I didn't know nobody here. Right. Yeah. So what I did is I just gave work away. Interesting. I gave away, I did a um I did a two and a half story edition for three hundred dollars a week. Wow! I didn't care. I sold one point six million, I think, on that job. I'm just bringing clients there. Really interesting. So you I leveraged did. your skills, realized I got to show people what I can do. Get a couple jobs here and there. If you're very confident in what you can do, give it away. That's the biggest test, right? Wait, 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 you're not confident giving it away. I'm going to lose money. No, no. So now you're not confident. You there think you're you losing money. I don't think I'm losing money. I'm just, I'm not giving away nothing. I'm making money. You're just looking at, at the front of the page. I'm in the back of the book somewhere. Right. You know? Right. I'm like, no. So you'd rather not give it away. Where you're going to spend money on hats, t-shirts. You're going to market, brand it, go see a guy like you, do a podcast. Yep. Just like, before you even got a job. Right. I'm already working at 300 bucks a week and that job's going to pay for everything now. How much money did I spend? Nothing. Interesting. No, you know what? I think a lot of people, that's, that's actually how I got my first client ever was, hey, uh, I'd love to do three weeks of free services for you. And it worked. And now look at, right? Dealing with realtors all over, right? I did. I've always wanted to do, uh, this one thing I've always wanted to do my whole career. And I had an opportunity to do it when I started this company. And I was in a back, perfect place to do it. I started property rehab, and this was my uh, mission statement. I started property rehab in the hardest, most difficult way you could start a business. And that's what I did. Right. Well, what do you mean? Yeah, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah. I move into a town. I don't know anybody. Oh. I had no money, right? I had uh, no connections. I had nothing. It's like you walk away with just your clothes on yep. and your phone on the table, go to a town you've never been. Go. And see what you can do. Go. No, you're broke. Yeah. I want to prove a point. Now, everything I've done for this company, um, I don't brag. I'm very humble to it. Yeah, yeah, you, you are. Say, you are. Yeah, yeah. People can say, look what you built. I'm bragging about one thing in my head. I'm like, I don't care what I built. It's how I got here mm-hmm. is what makes me feel good. You know? Yeah. And now everything I do it has 10 times more value to me because I've actually started from make it scratch. Yeah. And Nothing. You, the amount you learn just from doing that, putting yourself in that position it's, it, it goes back to, um, there's, a, there's a famous saying, it's called seek discomfort. Yeah. And I think, I think you, you kind of modeled that when, when you did that. I've got this guilty thing, yeah. It's like I, um, I should say punish. I've got this thing where I like to suffer sometimes because that suffer drives me. It, it pushes you. Because nobody, um, you, you want to see how much you have, how much potential you have, put yourself under stress. Yep, that's very I'm true. Like, uh, I don't feel like working. How do I get motivated? What's well, so, I don't know. Go, go sleep under a bridge one night. You'll find man so many ways to eat. Yeah, <laughs> you that's know, that's true. You know what? And, 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 and they and, always say desperation breeds success. And sometimes being too comfortable in business, I made it uncomfortable. It kind of hurts the creativity of the hustling. It's right. like what's pushing you. It's like um, like a musician who writes the first album. He had a lifetime of pain to write it, right? Yeah. Now they're a multi um, award winning worldwide artist. Right album number two now. Uh. <laughs> huh. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it puts you, it's yeah. hard now, eh? 
it puts yourself in a position that you you have to really learn what your audience wants and then how do you actually go about building those relationships, building the, the networking. You got to keep that hunger. Yeah. Boxers do it. Heavyweight champion in the world, man. He was hungry and he got there. It's hard to keep that hunger when you're there, though. It's true. So sometimes, yeah, I'll put myself, I'll, uh, self, not self-destruct, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Put myself in a position or. Uncomfortable position. Sometimes. We're, Say uncomfortable. Yeah, I think Oh, this business yeah. deal went, went, went sour, man. We're going to lose 50 grand. And it sucks. Oh, my God. But yet, okay, now it's going to, now I'm, I got to do something to make up that thing. So it gives you that drive. Yeah. And I think that's a, a very um, non, or not a lot of people look at it that way, which is unfortunate. It's good to be comfortable. Don't get me wrong. Everybody wants to be comfortable. Yeah. But it's hard. It's hard to be, I don't know. We were talking about working out earlier. Yeah. 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 You know, it's sometimes you just like, you're comfortable. Mm. You get to a place where you think you want to and you get hungry. You're in that basement at five o'clock in the morning. Ugh. Yeah. Eh? But then if you lose that drive, you're like, eh, I'll take a day off. It's like, it's like riding the wave of emotion. Yeah. Like this, keep it this, keep it flat. Yep. Right. When you're up, just remember the down. When you're down, don't worry about it. The up's coming. So, Roger, what would to, to somebody listening? What would be some advice that you would want to give to um, somebody right now, working their absolute tail off? Would you say stop, relax, or would you say know where you're at? Would you say um, you know try to reach out, build new connections rather than just force yourself to work all the time? What would, what would be some advice? Like like I'm almost saying, talk to yourself at 25 years old, who you are today. Well. <sighs> You're working your ass off, right? You're, you're going crazy. Yeah. My advice to you, stop for a second. Just stop. I don't care if it's a week. Go to a cottage for a week. Rent a cabin. A camp. Don't even th- forget work and assess. You maybe realize you're swimming like crazy, drowning, but you're only two feet of water. You're standing up. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I love you know? it. I love that. Yeah, yeah. That analogy. You know, because... You're going too much. Slow down. I do it. I still do it today. You think I? You think because I had a, a epiphany at 34? No, it's 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 a it's a lifetime, it's a lifetime thing. Right. You know, I could be like that again if I just oh this biz that business. It's very very careful, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I would say definitely stop, look, and examine, and just write everything down. What's going on? It may not be as complicated you, as you think. Like, why am I swimming like crazy on the shore? Is like right there. I'm going over there. And it's like, I think that would relieve so much unknown stress that you have. Because it's, you know why it's hard to stop? You don't want to stop and think because you feel, and we all feel that we got to keep hustling. If we stop for a week, we're going to lose. You know, the momentum's gone. We're going to lose our business. We're, that's it. Where it's over. We have to keep on going. If a week away is going to kill your business, you have bigger problems. Right? Yeah. I think that's a great way to put it. But it's very hard. It took me a long time to realize yeah. that, you know, but I would say that. I think that, I but, think but, but if you're working like up. crazy and you're having fun, like. Do, and, and I see that in you because I, I think a lot of people would look at your life and say, wow, you work a ton. Like we were just talking about this literally like, wow, Roger, you work so much. Well, in your opinion, you don't, you don't right. Cause I think you, you've learned how to manage family life and, and work life. Um, work efficient. Uh, okay. So managing your time, managing your time, you can work efficiently, but no, um, yeah, in my, in my experience, I don't work as much as I know I could. Mm-hmm. You know, I know I could have two other companies. Yeah. You know, I've, that's what I did most of my life, not more than one company. But my kids are more important to me than any success right now. You know, I, and when, I made, when I made a promise to, be, to keep this small until my kid's a little older, I made that. You know, I'll walk away from a million-dollar deal or another investment, whatever. I don't care. I made that promise to them. And if I feel if I break that promise, it'd be like me lying to them. So yeah. I put that in my head. And I love, um, I mean, you were just talking to me about a project, like the one that we started up yeah. the, with a podcast, the one in spring. And I see a lot of what you do, and you just did a really cool project too. We don't have to get into it, but I see a lot of what you do. And it's like, I almost get the sense that you actually just accept the jobs that you just want to do. Like the ones that you you let your creative mind go go crazy and and I'm getting enjoy. There. I'm getting there. You know, when you first start out, um, it's hard to do that. Yeah, you're the yes man when you start out. You eh? start out. Yeah. But now, well, it's two things. And now you, you, you're established. You'll be able to pick and choose. Plus, That's true. There's a huge boom down here, so... There's no shortage of work. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, like, it's very true. You, you can start a business tomorrow. You can pick and choose. Yep. Yeah, that's well, yeah. true. But uh, to go back with the creative mind, I got to go back a little bit. 
and it's it's also a team. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I got a lot of things in my head, but I can't say nothing. You know, it's stuck in there. Yeah, but I do have a great designer I work with, and so like she just plugs it in. It's, it's like you organize your ideas. Like, yeah, she helps you organize. But she, but also she comes up with a lot of great ones. Right, you right. Know, m- most of the great ones. I just know what <laughs> I. I just know what I want. But you, you, yeah, you don't know how to articulate. Uh, it's like it's yeah, yeah. It's like you're screaming, but you nothing's coming out. Yeah. <laughs> and you got the right person, and we I'll, can put a cutaway of that. <laughs> and I'll say something like, "I don't want it to be beautiful, boring." Uh, <laughs> That's just like, got it. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want it to be beautiful, boring. I love that. You know, like, you know what? I think it goes back to, and I struggle with this too. Is you know, you have all these ideas and, and especially creatives, right? You, you come up with so many cool ideas, but what's an idea if you don't do anything with it, right? Like there's really, there's no, there's no value to that, right? So it's like, okay, what are the ideas that are worth pursuing? And what I like what you said was your team. Your team lets you know, hey, Roger, yeah, this is a great idea. I think it's worth pursuing. Let's give it a try or this. Or, I think that's a great way to look at it. And, and I admire that because it's easy to get lost in ideas. And, and when you have the financial backing, you, and you kind of, you know, you could set aside time to do it. It's hard to not fall into just the trap of this idea. Oh, and then now moving to this idea and even starting out building a business. Um, a lot of people struggle with organizing their ideas and they try this. Oh, well it didn't work. I didn't close a client this first sales call ever. Okay, really? You think you're going to do that? Okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try this. And then nothing ever works for them because they're so all over the map. So my final question to you is, as we wrap up the podcast, I want to ask you one final thing. Advice you would give to younger people, let's say my age, 18 years old, that have ideas and want to pursue something, what would be some advice you'd give to them to pursue at least one thing and organize their thoughts? Oh, that'd be a hard one for me to give. Yeah, because there's so many variables, right? So many variables too, but I'm one to, um, like you said, a team would be like, oh, that's not a great idea. I don't care. Right. Like, who's to say this not might be, the, you know, a great, a great, great yeah, idea. A great idea. I just still say that um, just just go for it. Yeah. You, know, you got to put a cap win. Yeah. Okay, that did not work. But don't be afraid if you really believe on that idea, to pursue it. Like, the voices can say whatever you want to you. But if you believe, don't be afraid to do it. You know, take it, take the advice, yes, in consideration. Yeah. But follow your passion. They told Musk that Tesla's never going to work. Yeah, same with PayPal. They said, nah, man, that's the stupidest thing. He goes, you're right, and it makes sense to what you're saying. Mathematically wise and everything, I'm still going to do it. I love it. I'm still going to do it, yep. You know? It's like it's like not letting the outside voices come in. Don't let them talk your way out of it. Yeah. You know, a lot of times I'll listen and I'll be, this tells you. My team goes, ah, that's not a good idea. Or even a designer, whatever. You know, yeah, you're right. But if you're like, no, man, I really want to do that. I really want to do this crazy, weird, freaking whatever. Just yeah. do it. Just do it. I think it's cool because you, you let that creative side come out. It's, 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 uh, don't be afraid to fail. Who cares? If it doesn't work, big deal. Yeah. And I, and I, you know, a lot of people say this and, and I love that quote because it's like, in reality, you don't fail if you learn from it. You just made a mistake. It's, it's a lesson. It's never a failure. It's a lesson. Yeah. You know I, what? You I know, like that. You yeah. know, what's a failure? Not attempting it. I think you failed yeah. by not doing it. What do you mean? I didn't, if I didn't do it, I didn't, no, no, you're a failure for not doing it. Now you'll never know. Right. So not knowing it's kind of a failure. It is. It is because you, you didn't pursue something because you yeah. let something else affect that decision. You know, I said that many times in my life, and I failed so many times in my life. In my, I get back, right. I'm like, at least I tried it. At least you tried it. You know? Yeah. I mean, how do you fault a guy for trying it? It's almost impossible. You, that's very true. The guy won't try to go to Jupiter, and uh, he failed. I'm like, well, uh, try to go to fucking Jupiter. I'm like, <laughs> I can't say nothing about yeah, that. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know no. what? I, you know what? I think that's a great way to close it off because I think if, if this podcast, if this show can motivate somebody to just try to get, just get, seek discomfort, like you said, get out of your comfort zone and push yourself to do something that maybe you're not normally used to, or maybe that your parents or, or people around you, your friends say, yeah, don't try it. It's not a great idea. Nobody is you. Nobody's you. you, but you. Nobody's you, but you, man.
I love it. Roger, thank you so much for joining us today, brother. Um, you, I'm going to shout out your Instagram. So you guys can follow Roger at Property Rehab. If you just search that up, it'll pop right up. Um, but he takes on really cool products. So if you've got a creative brain, he'll want to work with you. Um, and I think, I, I think, is that the only way that we can reach you? Or is there any other? That's good enough. Yeah, good enough. I love it. Check out his work. He uh, he does some fun videos. And, uh, and you, you see my kids. Yeah, you see his kids <laughs> too. Love it, right? Awesome. Well, Roger, thanks so much, brother. We're going to close it out today. Thank you for listening, everybody. And I hope that you got something out of this conversation. Thank you for listening to this week's Golden Guest on the Meeting Gold Podcast. If you learned something from today's episode, make sure to check out our other content on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Instagram, and YouTube. Also, make sure to leave us a follow while you're there. Thanks, and have a golden day.